Well, anyway, hey, we had a heck of a show, we did. this Wrestle Dream. Mm. And yes, when the show was over, you know, everyone, everybody is like, ah, Brian knew, but he didn't say it. I swear to God, I had no idea it was going to go on at the end of the show. And in fact, in fact, if I would have put money on it, I would have put money on Nick Wayne not turning heel. Because we talked about this on the show, this idea that, you know, he's he's a natural baby face. He works like a baby face. And he's never worked heel in his life. And I thought, listen, there's a thousand things that they might do, but I can't imagine that they turn Nick on Darby. I just can't I can't imagine it. And uh, that is in fact what they did. Nick turned on Darby in Seattle. Darby lost in Seattle. He lost the big one. Nick turned on him because apparently this uh, if Christian was right about one thing, he's he, he's a you know the irony? You know what an irony about all this? What? An irony is that me and Vinny and uh and the late Sonny O'Mara and also the late Buddy Wayne. We all worked together on a video many years ago where we were going to give Vinny a new gimmick. And it's played here during the commercial breaks. How how Shoulders Torelli became Big Vinny V. Yes, that is not that is not Craig. Yep. And as as, is... as part of this, we filmed in front of the Green Hill School for Wayward Youth. What is that? Well, when you drive from here to Oregon, which Buddy and I did like a thousand times, you go through Chehalis, and there's uh, there's the Green Hill School for Wayward Youth. And every time we drove by, Buddy would point it out. There's the Green Hill School for Wayward Youth. <laughs> uh, did you uh, go to that school? The whole nine yards. And so, you know, we decided we were going to film. Alvarez, don't make me drop you off there. In front of the Green Hill School for Wayward Youth, which had to have been a rib by Buddy. Because when it was over, we were like, you know, Vinny could have got shot. Because we put him in a, in a, like a straight jacket and we had him flee in front of the Green Hill School. And anyway, now Nick Wayne is a wayward youth. It's all come full circle. He, Nick Wayne, should now be at the Green Hill School for Wayward Youth. Mm. So anyway, uh, he turned, and then uh, they're beating. Have you talked to his mother about this yet? Has anyone reached out to her? My God, she's she's turned off her phone. Ugh. But anyway, all of the uh, all of this happened, and then you know they're beaten down. They're beating down Darby, and then Sting tries to come out, and they they beat down. St- or at a, yeah, Sting came out. Then Luchasaurus came out, and then anyway, they're beating him down three on two. And I, you know, by this point, I knew Edge was coming. I, I had a feeling Edge was going to show up when they put this in the main event position because there were only two options: either Darby wins in Seattle, which he did the last time they had a dynamite in Seattle, or he was losing and there was like a big angle. And man, as soon as it's like the the numbers advantage for the heels, I knew he was coming out. And then Christian got that chair for the concerto, and it was like. I knew. And out he came. And man, this place went haywire. And part of the reason they went haywire was because he's got his uh, WWE music. Because, you know, the the people that put the music together are friends of his. And they were the ones that hold the rights to the song. And so he said during the press conference, he's taking that music everywhere. And so, man, they hit that, that music and this place just goes haywire. And he comes out and he helps clean the ring and... Dude, that was one of the biggest pops. And there were there was like, I think it was 7,500 people there or something like that. It sounded like triple. I mean, they were going crazy for this guy. And so Adam Copeland has now debuted for AEW. They say he's going to be a regular. He's going to be on the show Wednesday. He's going to be on the show Saturday. He's going to be on the show next Tuesday when they go head-to-head with NXT. He's going to be wrestling Luchasaurus. And, uh, and he said, like, I'm a regular. I'm going to wrestle all the time. I'm on all the shows. So that seems to be the plan, unlike when he was in WWE. And, you know, he had a X number of matches per year. And, like, he would do a short run. And then, you know, invariably there would be a storyline injury. He'd be gone for six months and then come back for another one. But uh, that was the big angle to end the show. And, uh, and it was a great angle to end the show. And there were great matches up and down the show. And... You know, I've been to a lot of AEW pay-per-views. I don't know if this was the best one I ever went to, but certainly there were people that thought this was the best show that they've ever done, and there were people that thought, and I was sitting next to two of them, actually, that the Brian Danielson, Zack Sabre Jr. was the greatest wrestling match they had ever seen, and uh, I don't know if he's uh, 
I'll just say that um, I believe Tony Khan also thought that was the greatest wrestling match he'd ever seen and maybe the best show they had ever done. So, mm. uh, yeah, it was uh, something else, let me tell you. I think for the fans that were paying their money and, and hoping that that's what they were going to get, they are fully satisfied. And apparently from what Dave told you on Wrestling Observer Radio, the show uh, seems to be trending in a good direction, so that's good. I don't know if anybody purchased this just being an AEW fan and saw Zack Sabre Jr. for the first time, but if you are open to different styles of wrestling, to see him, to see Josh Barnett, to see some of the other things that you saw on the show, I, you know, Katsuyori Shibata and Eddie Kingston, I think, you know, you probably like those people a little bit more now. If you're closed-minded, well, odds are you didn't order the pay-per-view anyway, let alone sit through Brian Danielson and Zack Sabre Jr., but they held up their end of the deal. Swerve and Hangman Page, I mean, I'm not sure how much of the show we're going to go through, but for the most part, everything clicked and everything worked. Even matches like Julia Hart and uh, and... Uh, Chris Statlander, you know, I thought landed because Julia Hart looks so good in it and has improved so much. The only match I think that probably shouldn't have been on the show was Ricky Starks and, and Wheeler Yuta. I understand why MJF was on there because he's MJF, although that was really more of a TV match. But I think you probably could have saved Ricky Starks and Wheeler Yuta, given them some more time, made it a main event of a show, and added some bells and whistles and gaga around it to really make sure at the end Ricky Starks closed the show with a victory over the Blackpool Combat Club, you know, with a whole lot of shine to him. So that that would be my only demerit on the show. Everything else I, I thought absolutely accomplished what they wanted it to. Yeah, we had uh, the MJF match, which... God, the fans ate this match up. <laughs> and it was all built around the body slam and the head in the buttocks. And uh, and they delivered. The place went nuts. MGF defeated the Righteous 2-on-1 handicap match, which basically was exactly what we were talking about on the show the other day as to why the Righteous ended up winning that match. And uh, he has vowed to hold on to those Ring of Honor tag titles until Adam Cole comes back, which may prove difficult because I'm not sure he's going to be back for quite a while. Eddie Kingston and Shibata was a great match. Eddie Kingston won. Statlander, Julia Hart, that was very good. I've been very, very impressed with Julia Hart of late. And uh, my one hope is she does not lose, and then uh, the usual, her cycle's over, so she vanishes. I think that she should, uh, they should continue to push her, because the fans, are, they wanted her to win this match. When she hit that moonsault, they went crazy. And they counted along, and they were mad when Statlander kicked out. They still liked Statlander, but, man, they wanted Julia to win. Young Bucks won the four-way. Ray Phoenix, they did an injury angle. Uh, he's uh, banged up, but they wanted him out of there so he could rest up for Wednesday because they're they're hoping for a classic with him and Nick Jackson. But uh, the Young Bucks won. They can ta uh, challenge for the tag title at any time. Swerve beat Hangman in a great match, which Dave noted got a lot of votes for best match. So that should tell you something. Sure, I can see why. Ricky Starks beat Wheeler Yuta. Danielson beat Zack Sabre Jr. in the Dream Match, which was also, what a fantastic match. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you. WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute... As noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. You also get Observer Archives dating back to 1990. 
So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.